Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to do a video about the ship's XO, or executive officer. He is the second in command of the ship, and he's in charge of the crew, their morale, uh, their duty assignments, discipline, those sorts of things. Uh, so while the captain is in charge of the whole ship and responsible for everything, the executive officer uh, focuses more on personnel and works closely with the captain uh, and is working towards commanding their own ship one day. The executive officer has a uh, large stateroom, uh, the largest on the ship with the exception of the captain's import cabin and uh, the retrofitted admiral's cabin. Uh, and it is befitting of his rank. It is right off of the wardroom, and he is in charge of the wardroom mess. So during formal meals, the other officers would not take their seat or start eating until the executive officer came out and the meal formally began. So on American Fast Battleships, the XO's cabin is on the starboard side, on the forward face of the wardroom, with other... Uh, department heads located nearby in slightly smaller offices. The XO is one of a very small number of people who have a carpeted stateroom. And that's where the term being called to the carpet comes from. On a Navy ship, uh, there aren't too many carpeted spaces. If you end up getting called to the carpet, you're probably getting yelled at for something. Uh, so the Admiral's cabin, the Captain's cabin, and the executive officer's cabin are all spaces that have carpets in them. What was it like then to go before Captain J. Edward Snyder and Captain's Mass for missing a week of uh, service? Yeah, no, I just missed a weekend. Weekend, I'm sorry. Yeah, weekend. I took a long weekend. Okay. And uh, well, I, I was scared, you know. How old were you at the time? 19, oh, I was, I was only 19. 19. So, or 18 or 19. When you took the weekend off, did you realize you would get in trouble maybe? Well, well, he, uh, I knew I was going to get in trouble. I just didn't know how much trouble I was going to get into. And see, if it hadn't been for my big mouth in front of the XO, I probably wouldn't have got what I did get. Say. What did you say to the XO? So you went to the XO for Yeah, for you went to XO's investigation first and and uh, he asked me if I'd do it again, and I said, yes, sir, under the same circumstances I would. And I told him that twice, and he slammed his fist down on his desk and said, Captain's mask. And uh, my chief that went in there with me, he said, you dumbass. He says, if you'd have said no, he'd have let you go. <laughs> but... Not me, I had to be a hard hit. So if you are called for disciplinary action, you would form a line right here outside of the XO's interior door. There's also an exterior door. One of the cool features here is an original World War II era call box. So the XO has a couple of buttons he can use to call orderlies. When he hits those, it'll flip uh, these squares down, which will say what he needs, if, if he needs his stateroom cleaned or He's taking his meal in there, whatever the case is. Uh, so the orderlies can, as they're walking by, cleaning up the wardroom or whatever the case is, see that, go in, and deal with it. Um, as you come in, you'll see that there is a light-up sign over the door. This is probably an 80s edition. It says, do not disturb. You'll notice that the tile around us is all blue, meaning that uh, this is officer's country and an enlisted guy without business should not be here. About to be chewed out is certainly business. And then when you step through the door, you are on the carpet. Now on this side uh, is a door that the museum has cut to make this space uh, handicap accessible. Coming through, uh, we have the XO's office, which has his desk and files and everything. We've also got a sitting room on this side, um, complete with couch and chair. The XO is one of the few officers who has um, two rooms in their cabin. 
So again, uh, this was originally a 26 inch joiner door and the museum cut it to, uh, I believe it's 32 inches to be handicap accessible because we've converted the XO's head into a handicap bathroom. So coming through, uh, we are now in the XO's cabin. He's got uh, the same sort of wood grain painted furniture that shows up in the captain's cabin and flag spaces. And uh, he's got a large bed, much like shows up in the captain's cabin. The ship's first XO, uh, being responsible for personnel, got to make a lot of decisions about where the new crew members were assigned as the prospective crew of the battleship uh, came in while the ship was still under construction. Um, while Stillwell's book, Battleship New Jersey, clearly documents this, uh, I assume a similar process would have happened every time the battleship was recommissioned, and I suspect the XO would have been largely responsible for it uh, during those periods as well. Well, the ship was in Bayonne, New Jersey, and I looked at her and I said, well, she's a big baby, and uh, I just wonder how long it was going to take us to get going because we had no, no crew members to speak of, no officers to speak of, and you had to get a city, a small city organized, afloat, get it equipped, get all the necessary personnel aboard and sign into their different slots. And I think we did it in pretty reasonable time. Normally, the battleship's executive officer was a commander, one rank below captain, with the ship's commanding officer, the CO, being an actual captain. Uh, however, under at least the last two commanding officers, the XOs were also captains in their own right. So how does that work, a ship with two captains? Well, uh, the Navy has a prioritized list of captains based on when they got the promotion. So there can be a more senior captain giving orders to a more junior captain. Uh, and on a ship as large and important as Battleship New Jersey in the late 80s and early 90s, it's not surprising that uh, she had two captains. The, the number of crew members on board that were being administered by the executive officer was certainly reasonable there. Um, likewise, in the larger Navy, aircraft carriers were also getting two captains around this time period. Uh, so it's not at all uh, surprising that the battleship got that. What is surprising is that whereas aircraft carriers and amphibious warfare ships tend to have a surface warfare and an aviation guy in those roles, uh, the battleship as a purely surface warfare vessel uh, probably had surface warfare officers both as the commanding officer and executive officer. Well, where I sit right now was where my desk was. And where this divan was, was over where the desk is over against that bulkhead. Bedroom in there, it didn't have the, the shelves and things against the wall there. I had a, I had a cabinet, a clothes cabinet and a, a metal cabinet hang my clothes in there. And then the shower, I had different colored carpeting, of course, and it was painted a little bit differently. I think it's painted. P. Green. So, have you ever been called to the carpet before? Either on board a ship or at school or in some other circumstance? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. If you don't want to get called to the carpet, click the link in the description below to help donate and uh, support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks for watching.